Having a baby can be a really, really exciting time. And it's even more exciting, although daunting, when they start to learn new skills. The thing is though, sometimes these skills can have an impact on your baby's ability to sleep well, either during their naps or overnight. So while we're all really excited about the fact that they might be able to pull themselves up, when they're doing it at two o'clock in the morning, you can kind of get a little bit like, are you serious? What? Today, I'm going to be answering your sleep question. My nine month old is standing in their cot. Do I leave them? And the good news is there is an explanation for this and a way to manage it. So stay tuned and I'll explain further. Hi, I'm Taylor, one of the pediatric sleep consultants here at Little Ones, a mother to one hilarious little girl. At Little Ones, we specialize in pediatric sleep, ranging from newborn to three years of age. We do this via our app, which gives you access to our program, along with our nutrition information provided by our accredited practicing dietitian. We also have further tips and advice relating to preschool age children and care for yourself, which is also quite important. If you'd like any further information relating to our program and how we can help you and your little one on your journey to achieve the best sleep, you can visit our website, www.littleones.co. So before we dive into the big question there, let's first take a look at what happens in this older infant stage of your little one's life and what could be the cause of your little one standing up in the cot in the first place. So between six to 12 months, there's a lot that can happen developmentally for them. There's regressions that we contend with, there's physical developments, there's cognitive developments, there's a whole range that's happening in this short window of time that is actually massive for your little one. And as a result, their sleep can take a hit. Between that six to 12 month window as well, we start to see some pretty significant things happening in your little one in terms of their sleep. So around six to eight months of age, your little one should have dropped down from having three naps a day down to only having two naps a day. So this in itself can be a transitional period that can cause a bit of an upset with their sleep. If your little one is still nine months of age and they're still having a third nap, it's probably the cause of them waking overnight because they're just getting a little bit too much sleep in, particularly if that sleep is happening after about three o'clock in the afternoon. They're just not gonna be tired enough to do that full big stint overnight that we're after. So beyond eight months of age though, if they're back down to having only two naps a day, then that should help with their overnight sleep and keeping them down for a long period of time. Also between six to eight months of age to your little one should be establishing on solids. And this can also impact on their sleep too, particularly if your little one is uh, still getting used to balancing out the amount of solids they have with the amount of milk feeds that they're having in the day too. So we'd still be encouraging a milk feed at this age, um, right up until about 12 months of age as well. And even beyond, it's up to you. Between six to eight months of age, their solid intake will start to increase as well. And they're still just finding that nice balance there. Another point relating to the solids though, we would recommend that little ones avoid protein, any source of protein at dinner up until the age of 10 months of age, just because they can't quite digest it properly under the age of 10 months of age. And sometimes that can actually impede their ability to sleep well overnight too. So what are some of the things that happen between eight to 10 months of age that can impact on their sleep? You've got the regression that occurs between eight to 10 months of age. This one's a, a, a fun one. It's often referred to as a sleep regression, even though it's not technically any sort of sleep maturation that's occurring, unlike at the four month sleep regression. The eight month regression is more so these massive amounts of development that are happening in your little one and that in itself can then cause your little one's sleep to be disrupted. Not necessarily that their sleep is moving on to another stage. So because of these huge changes in your little one's development or these massive milestones that they're just reaching, these can then affect your little one's sleep overnight purely because they're waking and going, 
oh my gosh, this is the best time for me to practice shouting really loud because I feel like mum was really vibing with me today when I did that. So I reckon doing it right now would also really impress her too. They start shouting. You're laying in bed going, oh my God, it's two o'clock in the morning, stop. But to them, oh, this is the best thing ever. The thing with this though, is that we just need to ride it out. Regressions realistically don't last that long in your little one. It's the habits that they pick up during this time that can then continue on and on and on and on and on, which can make it feel as though the regression is never ending. But really, it's just making sure that you are nipping any new habits in the bud before they can spiral into you suddenly having to go into your little one every single night and either cuddling or rocking or feeding them back to sleep. So what are some of the developments that we see between that sort of eight to 10 month period that could be in fact impeding your little one's ability to sleep? We might start to see them standing or pulling themselves up. They might also then be starting to cruise around furniture during the day as well. Their ability to be able to feed themselves too. They'll have been sitting independently for quite a while now. The other thing that can happen around eight months of age, although can be anywhere between eight to 10 months of age, is that your little one will go through a bout of separation anxiety. Now this one is a pretty big peak that they hit. This is the age where they're starting to become a little bit more aware of object permanence and you are a pretty significant object in your little one's books. So because of this, they might start to appear a little bit more anxious around bedtime. It might seem to come from nowhere and you, you don't necessarily know what's going on. But the thing is they are learning that you're about to leave them. They're starting to make that connection of when I go to bed, my carer is no longer there. And I don't like that because I can't see them. And life is amazing when I can see them. So the thing about separation anxiety is that it's only going to get stronger if you feed into their anxiety around you leaving them. One of the best ways to combat separation anxiety is to give your little one plenty of time during the day to get used to the idea of you not necessarily being with them 100% of the time, all the time. So often peekaboo games, that's a really clever one because it helps to teach them about object permanence as well. And it also in a way gives them a moment of you not being there, even though you're still there. Another really handy one can be to make sure that you give your little one times with another responsible adult or somebody that can be around them where you might be able to slip away, even if it's just for two minutes, just so that they're not necessarily seeing you all the time and they come to terms with, okay, so when my carer leaves, the world doesn't implode on itself. I should be okay. The good news is too that this big bout of separation anxiety is actually a really good uh, sign that they're developing really well. It means that they're taking yet another step in their development at their early age. Now, separation anxiety doesn't go away. You will still find that they might have another bout again when they're a little bit older. But the thing is, if you can get through this bout really well and make sure that there aren't any negative associations that stick, you'll be able to handle the next one really well too. So to answer your question, about your nine month old standing in their cot. I'm assuming that this is either mid nap or it could be even at the start of naps or it could be that it's happening overnight in the middle of the night. <laughs> so to answer your question, if it's safe to do so, leave them. We would recommend that you have your little one in a sleeping bag still. This can help to kind of impair their ability to move around too much in their cot. And oftentimes it can then mean that the novelty wears off because they're like, ah, this is quite tricky. So I'm bored, I'll lay down. And then hopefully if you've got your routine uh, on point and you've got all the other sleep associations set up and they're nice and tired because they've got a good routine, they should hopefully just settle themselves back down to sleep and continue to sleep. 
However, if it is at the point where you're feeling that like your little one might not be safe when they are pulling themselves up or standing in the cot, you can certainly go in and help to lay them down. But the key here is making sure that you do it as boring as possible. So don't say anything, keep the room dark, literally pick them up, lay them down and walk out. That way they'll soon realize that this game sucks and I just want to sleep now. Whereas if you make it exciting and you talk to them and say, you need to fall asleep, you need to lay down, stay down. They'll be like, this is the best. My separation anxiety is being fed. The other point that I will make as well, just around this too, is give them plenty of time to practice standing when they're awake. Set up the play space so that they've got lots of things that they can practice pulling and cruising along. Because that way, if they're filling this developmental tank and this practice, Whilst they're awake, overnight they're not going to be as keen on doing it because they'll be like, oh, I've got this. I've totally got this. I don't need to practice anymore. So to summarize the video, here are my tips that you need to remember during this time. Eight to 10 months of age is tricky for every baby. Make sure you give your baby plenty of time to practice while they're awake. Stick to your routine like glue. If you deviate from the routine, Things will very quickly unravel and you'll be spending a lot of time trying to make up the ground that you've lost. Don't introduce any new sleep associations that could then follow through this sleep regression. And finally, ride it out. It will pass eventually. And at the other side of it, you'll have a baby whose sleep has been minimally impacted during this time. So I hope you found this video helpful today. There will be a link in the description for a blog surrounding the eight month regression uh, if you wanted any more information around that. If you liked today's video and you'd like to keep up to date with all of our other videos that myself and plenty of the other consultants are making every week, you can keep up to date by clicking on the subscribe button and make sure that that notification bell is on so that you get notified when we do post a new video. If this one was particularly great or you just liked it in general, make sure to give us a thumbs up for the video too. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye now.